Um, <clears throat> it's always good to just be together with one another, and uh, I, I pray that any challenges you had this week, God has been faithful to get you through. It doesn't mean they were easy this week, but God has been faithful. As we're going to continue in our series of family and marriage, I entitled this series Family Matters, and today's message, last week we talked about the picture-perfect design, God's pit, uh, perfect design of marriage. We'll talk about that in, in just a moment. Today we're going to talk about the picture-perfect wife, and, and as I've purposely titled these next several messages, Picture Perfect, Picture Perfect, we, we immediately might think, well, that's not me. I'll never lead up. That's that's the whole idea. It's not, we're not there right now. But we can be when we use the principles that God has and what, what we can look at. So let me preface as I started last week, because this week particular, this subject is very a hot topic, I believe. Um, even amongst Christians, which I find in my 20 years of ministry, I'm surprised more and more who people don't buy into this concept because of, I will admit, the, the pressure that is being put onto us. And I'll give an example in just a moment. But let me give two warnings about this whole series as I did last week. Be willing to change your mindset based upon God's word, right? We have media that has flooded us, even back to the days when we still had print material. Right. I mean, we we had media flood us constantly, whether it's social media now, whether it's print media, whether it's newspaper, whether whatever. We have media that presses and pushes and pushes their agendas and their thought processes. And this is what you need to believe. We're taught this in schools. OK, you you also have your own experiences. Some experiences are very bad and I'm not here to lighten any of those experiences. Some of you have had some very bad experiences in this relationship called husband and wife. But just because that's your experience doesn't mean that's how God intended it to be. And that's what we're trying to understand, right? So we also have our own opinions about things, right? And, and everyone has, has an opinion, right? But is at the end of the day, is that really what we want as opinions? Or do you want God's word, right? So, so be willing to whatever you hear. Not because I say it, but because it's in the Word of God. Look at the Word and then say, okay, has, has my mindset been a certain way about this subject? And, and not just today, but in every subject going forward. Um, and do I need to change it according to God's Word? And then I challenge you simply this. The second warning is this. Think on these things. When you hear these things, they, they, today particularly, and I think tomorrow, and not tomorrow, but I'm ready for tomorrow, and, and next Sunday particularly, it's like sandpaper. It rubs you wrong. And at time, if, you, if you're in a shoe and you're walking, you get a little blister. That little blister rubs wrong and gets worse and worse. It rubs you wrong. And because it rubs you wrong, you immediately want to get out. Right? But here's what I want you to do. I want you to think on these things. I want you to consider. I want you to pray over them. I want you to meditate upon them. I want you to just continue to reread the scriptures that we're going to give you, the ones we're going to post on the screen, and anything else you continue to dig in these, these subjects. Because it is going to rub you wrong because of, number one warning, the media has pushed this and this and this. Okay? So keep these things in mind. So let me, let me just back up here. If you're just joining us, you didn't join us late. You're right on. We just started. This is our second week of this. Um, <clears throat> but in Genesis chapter 2 last week, we established the fact of the creation of man and woman, and we learned that God's plan from the, that passage, his original plan was that one man, one woman, be one flesh for one life, right? If we could just follow that as Christians, we're all set. That's how God designed it. One man, one woman, one flesh, one lifetime. And so we began to look at Genesis chapter 2 when we understood the purpose of marriage. And I, and I said a statement to you last week that most people enter marriage as if it had, was designed to bring them a level of happiness they do not currently have. And, but the purpose of marriage, as we saw in Scripture, was to provide a person to help you do what God designed you to do. 
and that's to glorify him. And if you and I will stop right there and buy into, not because I say it, but because it's in the word of God, the idea that we were given a mate so that we could serve the Lord, and that was the purpose of a marriage, biblically. You're already on the right track. However, we go into marriages thinking, what can I get out of it? My needs, my pleasures, my desires, my dreams, my goals, my, 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 right? That's what we want, and we already get off track. Because guess what happens? Those needs, wants, expectations do not end up getting met. We then fight, argue, scream, bite, spit, whatever we do. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this, as I'm going to show you a little, a little uh, uh, crazy cycle here, graphic coming up in the future, it's just this cycle just repeats, it repeats, it repeats. And, we, and you get tired. It's like a hamster on the wheel, right? That guy is so fat running on the wheel, but he never gets off the wheel. Just get off the wheel. You wouldn't be tired. But we keep, that cycle keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, right? And, and, and so that's the challenge. So, God says, hey, guys, the way I set this up, I'm giving you a mate so that you can serve the Lord. Now, you're here, you say, Eric, I, 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 I'm, I, I've had some things happen in my life. I'm no longer married. I'm single right now. I, I'm, my husband, my, my, uh, my wife has passed away. Every single principle that we're learning today applies to you and your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single principle you can apply, because look where we are. We're in Ephesians chapter 5 in just a moment. Great is the mystery of Christ and his church. If you're saved here, you're part of his church, the body of Christ. And you and I are going to learn some principles today of how we're to follow Christ. Right? Right? We talked about the design of marriage, and we looked at the, the four principles of design of marriage last week, the procreation, the partnership, the picture, and the purity. And then we talked about the destruction of marriage and what took place at, at, at the original plan of God's marriage. And it happened in Genesis chapter 3. They get away from the word of God. And you can point back to situations. It's, it's, the longer I do this, the more I continue to see. I know when I struggle in my relationship is when I get away from the Word of God. I, I know when things aren't right with, with things in my life, I, I got away from the Word of God. Now, oh, oh I was busy this week, and it was, it was this, and, and, and it, you, you can point back to it. When we get away from the Word of God, we start to question it, we start to doubt it, we don't, we don't live it, we don't practice it. And guess what? We're feeding if we're not feeding our spirit, what are we feeding? Our flesh. And in our flesh dwelleth what? No good thing. And so today we're going to look at our passage, but I, I want us as we begin to look at our passage of Scripture this morning, and let's pick it up here in uh, chapter 5. And, and, and man, this is so important. We, we go back to take the time to read the first um, <clears throat> 20 or so verses together. You would begin to see that that there it tells us there that to be filled with the Spirit of God there in verse 18. And, 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 and it talks about now coming into verse 21, and this is where I want to pick it up. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. As we're going to talk about this subject today, submitting. Already, some may get these goosebumps. Okay? Like this idea that this this subject of, of women are to be lesser, all right? Submitting, but it tells us where to submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That's everybody. Now, God does then break down, and that's why today we're just taking the passage. We're starting with the women today. Next week, we'll pick up with the men. Notice it says here in verse 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as Christ is subject unto, excuse me, the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, I give you thanks for who you are. Thank you for your word. I pray now that you'd help us, Lord. Um, <clears throat> our society and our world just constantly promotes um, these harsh things against women, uh, women's rights, um, this and that. And yet, God, your word says something so different. And yet, when even when we read this, we read today, if we're not careful, we read submitting means something lesser. And it really doesn't. And God, I pray that today you would, that, that through your word, you would show us what this means and how this really applies. And the reason, God, you have asked wives to respond this way. Father, today I ask that you help us and apply the scriptures. Again, whether it's wives directly or it's all of us as your children, Lord, how we respond to you. Do we submit ourselves to you in everything today? God, I pray for clarity and understanding. Help us to apply these things, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. So we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. I'm going to break down this husband-wife relationship, starting here with the wife. And, and it comes out of the passage, and I can't tell you how many times over the years I've heard, you know, maybe somebody say, oh, the women are lesser, or this or that. And man, it... I, I know we shouldn't listen to the media, but I do have a just, as, you know, I drive in the car, I like to listen to sports talk radio, and it's sports talk radio has gotten away from sports, it's everything else. And, and two of my favorite things they were talking about yesterday was basketball, and um, I like, I've always liked the college basketball scene, um, particularly the, what they call the, the, the 64, and they just had the, the ladies, um, Final Four and the men's Final Four, and immediately yesterday, I'm, I'm on my way to the Recycle Center, and immediately they're debating how women's basketball is better than men's basketball, and and it's like this starts this huge debate about this, right? It's like, and and the numbers were there. I mean, clearly the numbers were there. Like like they they clearly had more in attendance. The the, the tickets were were higher. In price, that more people went to it, more viewings, and all these. It's this constant competition, this constant one is better than the other, right? And we live now in what we call the Laodicean or the rights of the people, and this whole movement about women's rights and all these things that are going on, right? And so it's just this constant in our face, and it's like you got one side that says, Oh man, women need to have everything. And then then you have this other side, no, women need they need to be home in the kitchen, right? You've heard that thing before. I'm like, come on. What does God say about this? And why I say that, and it does sound extreme and it sounds silly. And maybe many of you don't follow into that. What happens is it creeps into our faith system. And we start to think and we start to experience and we start to understand, like. Oh, I guess as a Christian, I'm I'm really not supposed to say anything. I'm just supposed to like shake my head and put some food on the table for the guy. And you'd be surprised how many people buy into that idea. And that's not what God said. And it's because we have this warped, unbiblical thought process that you can think about it. If, if I get you for an hour, and I'm long-winded, so call it an hour and a half. 52 weeks a year, and that's if you're here every week. Tell me the media isn't getting you longer. And the stuff you read, even your favorite media outlets, and the magazines, and the newspaper articles, and this, and the TV shows. You see what I'm saying? We're constantly inundated that women should do this or women shouldn't do this. And I'm going to show you today what God says about women and that what we're going to talk about today is a response to a command that God set forward 
in Genesis chapter 2 when everything was perfect and he said, this is how I created man and woman. So i got two governing principles you need to understand. Number one, men and women were created equal. Can I have somebody say amen, please? All right. Do you, I mean, it's okay if you really believe it. Speak it. Because here's what's happening. You bring up one feed today or one newspaper article, somebody is going to sit there and say, that's not true. In God's eyes... They're equal. They're equal in standing, equal in value. God created mankind. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, he tells us he created mankind in his own image. It teaches us that men and women have equal potential in everything that God calls us to. Can I help you to understand point number two, governing principle number two, men and women are created to have distinct and different roles before God. He goes on the very next verse in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, and he says, male and female created he them. He said a verse earlier, he created mankind in his image. That means both men and women. But then he goes the very next verse, he says, man and female, or men and female. created he them. Because yes, he created everyone equal, but he created everyone distinct. We'll talk about that in a little bit when in communication, right? I mean, men and women are different. One ways we can clearly tell is how they communicate, right? We'll have a little fun with that. Okay, but understand this, but they've been given different roles also. Different roles does not mean lesser of a person to God. Ephesians chapter 11 and verse 3 will tell us, and we'll look at it later, Christ is over the man as the man is over the woman. <clears throat> See, God does not give men and women the same roles at home nor in the church, but they've been given different roles so that they can complement one another. So they can complement one another. If you read Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to get into our text here in a moment, the role of the woman is to be the helper. That's what, that's what God said. He says, I will make him a helpmeet for him. Remember Adam? Adam says, God created Adam, blew into him, took the dirt, blew into him, made life. He says, you're in charge of this all. Start naming the name animals, day after day, whatever time it took. You're a zebra, you're a lion, you're a giraffe, you're a ape, you're a... But there was not one that could be his companion, that could be, help him, that could just, like, just meet his needs, that could just be the partner, like, hey, let's go together and conquer this world and do what all that God wants. No. So God said, hey, let me make a help meet. And so as we begin this passage of Scripture, this, this role that a woman has to be a helper, this is what Paul references here in Ephesians chapter 5, is how she is to respond to her husband as a help meet. As we read just a moment ago in Ephesians chapter 5, and verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So let me, let me give you point number one here. Point number one, the command. The command. God commands you to submit. And, and letter A here, the cultural meaning. Many times when we think of this command, we think of this scripture, right? We think of this. Culturally, we think that means weakness, that means inferiority, that means they're, that they're a less of a person. And part of that is just the images and the communication, right? Because if you're in Islam today, you are considered a lesser person. 
according to their belief. That, that, that a woman would not get to paradise unless her husband is pleased with her. We have this idea sometimes in our culture that being in submission means that you have no thoughts, no voice, or no opinion. That's what culture tells you. If you're going to be a good, godly Christian wife, then it doesn't matter. You have no thoughts. You don't have no opinion. You have no voice. Well, I'm here to tell you culture's wrong. Culture is wrong. And guess what? Yet, if, if you're listening sometimes, that's what culture is starting, either one side or the other, saying, man, nobody runs you, nobody controls you. You're better than. Or, well, you're really not a good Christian because you're not just sitting there quietly, not in your head. Okay, whatever you want. Letter B tells us we're going to learn here. Now, let me just pause for a moment. If all you do is fill in the blanks and go home and try to get this, you're going to miss some things. You, you want to be taking some notes on the side here so that you'll get the meeting, okay? I, I, I worked real hard to try to give you thoughts, and I, just, I, I don't want to just try to get that. So, you, so you're going to want to get some more extra stuff here, right? So the correct meaning, when we talk about, let's just pause for a moment. The word submit is a military term. It, it term. it literally means to fall into rank. And yet, as, as we meant, spoke a moment ago, we think of submit. We think of this idea of something that, that is too bad, that, that, that one cannot have an opinion or a voice, or that one is lesser to them, that, that you fall under me in the sense of, like, I, I got control. I, you don't go anywhere unless I tell you to. In Scripture here, in this passage, the words submit and, sub and subject are verbs. They are used by the same Greek word, hypatas, which means to arrange oneself under. To arrange oneself under. Notice, it's to arrange oneself under, but can I say this? This word literally here, it, this idea of being submitted or in subjection, it, it is what we call in, as, a, as a tense in the English language in what we call the, and I had to double check myself here, I learned it recently, middle voice in our English tense, which means this, sub, this verb is not forced. It's not forced. It's not forced to be submitted. But biblical submission, now get this, is willingly volunteering to be subject under that authority. It's a willingness to voluntarily be subject under that authority. Go back to, remember what verse I just gave you? We started with, and, and, and Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, right? Submitting yourselves one to another. Men, we're, we're under Christ. All of us are under Christ, right? Voluntary. Now you've heard me say this. I, I have no power over you guys. Can you imagine a job like that? Like, I'm, I'm leading a group of people, and you try truly have no power over you. I have no power over you. It's you voluntarily submitting under the authority, in this case, the pastoral leadership, through God's word. Do you see that? It's not, it's not this, oh, pastor, he's this ogre rule. 
you know. I mean, some days I wish I could say, you know what? How come you weren't here last week? Give me a good reason why. And pay up for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? No, it doesn't work like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's voluntary. And that's what makes it hard sometimes because you're like, yeah, pastor, I hear you every week. I need to do this. I don't want to do it. Well, and then I'm at some crisis in your life, praying for you, loving you, trying to be there for you. Oh, man, I just wish you would just voluntarily submit. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, keep in mind, this, this concept here of you say, well, wait a minute, this idea of submitting, where did this come from? Well, keep in mind, it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. And in verse 16, I'm going to read it for you. It says, unto the woman, he said, this is, this is now, keep in mind, Adam and Eve, the garden, sin took place. God comes in their presence. And he hands out some things going forward. And this is what he says. Under the woman, he said, he being God, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy co- and, in, and thy conception. And in sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. So I, when the baby comes forth, it hurts, right? And, they des- and thy desire shall be to what? Thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. You say, I don't like that. It tells you in the verse who to take it up with. You think you got something on God? Do you see what I'm saying? Well, this is not fair. That's what God said. But can I, before we start throwing in and this group might not be the ones that say, this is not fair. But before we even head that direction, let me give you some examples here in Scripture. When we talk about this command of submitting, let, let's open your Bible to, well, flip in your Bible, keep here, and let's flip to Philippians chapter 2. I, I believe with all my heart, this, this passage here will show you the greatest example of this concept of submitting. In its full picture. Notice here in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 6. <clears throat> Who being in the form of God thought it not to be, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Who are we talking about? Jesus. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of what? A servant and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he what? Humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ, who was all God, equal with God, says, I will voluntarily submit myself Not with an attitude. Fine. Voluntarily submit himself to God. Go a little further. If we're in the Gospels now, you're in the Gospels. Go to Luke chapter 22. Uh, Jesus is in the Gospels, right? And, and we see his life here. And he's, and he's in the garden and he's praying. And, and, and when you read the story... It's not that Jesus is like, okay, come to the next event, come on. He's praying. And notice here is what he says. Luke 22 and verse 42. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. He knows what's going to happen, right? He knows that he's going to have to take on the sin of the world. He knows he's going to have to be crucified and beaten. He knows he's going to have to hang on a cross for a fault, for, for sin that he never committed. Notice what he says. Check this, this, check this out. Nevertheless, not... What's it say? My will. 
but thine be done. Thine be done. The best example in Scripture of a person submitting to another person is Jesus Christ himself. He's, that's why he says, he, know, knowing that, even in John chapter 10 and verse 30, he says, I and my Father are one. He knows. They're equal. He's confident. They're equal. And as I'm going to show you later on in our message, God says it multiple times that men and women are equal. But then he voluntarily submitted himself. Not thy will, but thine be done. <clears throat> so when we talk about this command here of submitting, of arranging yourself under, again, keeping in concept, what's the purpose of marriage? Why did we get together? So we could have a tax break. Well, I can tell you I'm at the end of that tax cycle, and my tax agent says, Sister, unless you're having more children, it ain't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're going to get married so we can have tax break. You're just only going to last. The government's going to change the rules anyways. Well, it's going to be cheaper on rent. Your rent's going up anyways. You know what I'm saying? Your purpose of coming together biblically is so that you can serve the Lord and bring glory to Him. And, and there's somewhere in the Bible two are better than one. You see what I'm saying? And if you're working together, wow. And so, okay, how, 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 how does God say, okay, wives, you're to be the helpmate? Because what we're going to learn next week, men, you've got to be here. I'm going to tell you here, I don't care if you're sick, Stand in the back, leprosy, there's the hidden city, but you need to be here. I'm saying that because this. We fall short. Because God, excuse me, because the enemy is attacking the home and the leadership in the home, which is the man. As we're going to learn here in just a moment, the reason God gives this responsibility to the woman. We're going to talk about him. Getting ahead, Eric, stay to the notes, please. But can I say submission is more than just obedience? Obedience is an action. If I say, okay, you know, so-and-so, I have one child at home, pick on Adeline. Adeline, go take out the dog. She either goes, takes out the dog or not. That's obedience, right? It's an action. Either she does it, she obeyed, she doesn't, now we're in trouble. You see what I'm saying? But when we speak about submission, submission has to do with our attitude. Submission has to do with our attitude. This concept of submission, <clears throat> as I said a moment ago, applies to all men and unmarried women here in our room. If you are saved and you are a believer in Christ, then, then Christ is your bridegroom. He is your spiritual husband. And we are his church. And we're called to submit to him. You're also commanded to submit to him. So men, do you submit to Christ in all things today? Widows, widowers, do you submit to Christ in all things today? Single people, do you commit to Christ in all things today? So the command that God says, hey, okay, woman, not, oh, oh women, sorry about that. Women. Um, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. We'll talk about that in just a moment. As unto the Lord. That's a command. He didn't go, well, you know, if you guys really feel like it. But, but let, me, let me extend this a little bit. Point number two, the extent. Point number two, the extent. God calls you to complete surrender. But what does that look like? Letter A, how are you to submit? Letter A, how are you to submit? 
Verse 22 of our text tells us, as unto the Lord, right? Well, how are we to submit to our husband? As to the Lord. Remember that the, that the church is the bride of Christ, and, and, and the church is to submit to the Lord in what? All things. Do we, you, you and I as Christians are like, well, I don't really feel like submitting to you, God. I mean, yes, we have a choice. But is that a good choice? Nope. As, how do we submit? As unto the Lord. We'll, we'll, we'll look at here. Well, what if my, my husband is not a good leader? How do I submit? As unto the Lord. Letter B. What are you to submit? What are you to submit? Look at our text again in verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in what? In everything. In everything? Yep. Even God then clarifies. He, there, hey, there's an exception here. And he gives us a great example of it. So turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. And the story is, is there's Peter, James, and John, and, and the disciples are out sharing the gospel here after Christ had ascended. <clears throat> and some of the counselors, the religious leaders, came to them. And they sort of they got them together, and they sort of verbally roughed them up a little bit. And then there in verse 27, it says in Acts chapter 5, verse 27, And when they had brought them, they sent them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in his name? Because what were they doing? They're preaching a the gospel. They're telling others about Jesus. And the council, this religious leaders, hey, didn't we tell you not to speak about Jesus? Notice it says, and behold, ye, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. This would have been the same group that would have condoned Christ. There's, look at verse 29. Then Peter and the other disciples answered and says, We ought to obey God rather than men. Right? We ought to obey God rather than men. <clears throat> you say, I'm a... I'm a Christian wife, and I'm to submit in everything, except until the point when your husband asks you to do something against God and His Word. Against God and His Word. Will, will I have a chance to lose my marriage? You might, if he's a knucklehead. But you know what? you got to stand before God and give an account for that. Right? Letter C. Whom are you to submit? So we're, how we're to submit? As, as unto the Lord. What are we to submit? In everything, right? Unless they ask you to disobey God. Whom are you to submit? Verse 24 and verse 22 says the same thing. Your own husbands. Right? This submission that we're talking about in this passage is to your own husbands. Now the question comes up. Why is it all why is it difficult? Why why is it why is it difficult to follow my husband? Why, why is your husband so difficult to follow? And, and a, a couple different things, and one, one we'll, we'll speak into next week, so I won't get into, um, because of the responsibility that many of us as men totally just decline. We don't do it. But, but let me just, let me put this, put this crazy cycle for me up on the, this crazy cycle, you might have experienced this before. 
right? So, so wife, you feel without love, therefore you react without respect. He feels unrespected or without respect. He therefore reacts by no love. And it's just constant cycle. Oh, I just need more respect. Oh, I need more love. I need more respect. It's a cycle. It keeps going, 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 going. Right? How do you break that cycle? As we're going to learn this week and next week, each of the groups of people need to do their role no matter what. No matter if the other one doesn't give what you need. Is it hard? Absolutely. It's absolutely hard. Ladies, why has God asked you as women when you get married to do this? What is the reason God has asked a wife that when she stands up here and, and she's on her wedding day and she's just beautiful and, and we do the marriage thing and we walk away and, and we do our things and you take in his name and you... You've embraced this dream, that house with a white picket fence and three dogs and ten cats and whatever you do, right? We don't probably think of the real reason why we're called to even do this. And unfortunately, many people probably don't even take any pre-counseling to have them taught about this role. They're like, your spouse is probably going to roll the toilet paper in the wrong direction. They're probably going to leave the seat up or leave it down, or they're probably going to do this or that. You know what I'm saying? And those are those are important things. But man, counseling can't ha can't help some of those things, right? You know what I mean? But we don't spend enough time talking about the roles and responsibilities of men and women. But can I say point number three here? The reason that God ordained, the reason that you are called to submit, the reason that God has made you a helpmate is that God ordained your husband as a leader. Men, I love you. I'm, I'm prepping my love for a ton this next week. I really do love you. I pray for you so, so often. But we cannot keep using the excuse, God didn't make me a leader. I'm not leadership material. Can I tell you, God commanded and set it up that way. God did that. If you, if you and I have a wrestle with that, it's with God. I didn't say that. I see the potential in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every uh, excuse me, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Again, notice a structure to where one falls under rank. That's all that is. No, no man doesn't like. Oh, I'm the man of the house. You do what I say, woman. You ought to be picking your teeth off the ground. You call your wife that, and then you call me. You know what I'm saying? I know we don't have people like that, but you, man, you don't, you don't treat your wife like that. She's equal. As we're going to learn last week, she should be the most valuable thing to you. The reason God has asked you ladies as your role of to be a helpmeet the reason he's asked you to submit is to understand that God has appointed your husband to be a leader. And through you doing this, it will strengthen your marriage. By you learning to submit and continuing to submit, it will grow you personally. It will teach and train your kids in this area. It will display a testimony of God's grace and love.
And that's why Paul says, this is a great mystery that I speak concerning Christ and the church. If, if we have missed the fact that, if we've missed the fact that, well, well, religion still minimizes women. Uh, let's set aside religion for a minute. I'm not religious in the first place. I just believe the Bible. So let me give you some Bible facts about women, just in case you haven't bought into this idea. First of all, many women were at the cross of Jesus. There was only one disciple. It was a woman who came to the tomb. Women were first appeared after the resurrection was a woman. The first person Jesus appeared to after the resurrection was a woman. Christ elevated the status of women as they traveled in the, with his disciples in Luke chapter 8. He went out of his way to speak to the Samaritan woman. He invited Mary and Martha to sit at his feet as a form of educating them. In the early church, there were many women who played important roles in the book of Acts. Mary, Dorcas, Julia, Lydia, Priscilla, Phoebe, etc. And Paul taught to the, to the church and to the men of the church uh, that, that, um, that husbands were told to love their wives sacrificially and to honor them. Paul taught in the early church in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that, that they were to be able to worship with men and that they were able to publicly pray. I put this statement in your notes just in case you have forgotten. Women are declared equal status, equal salvation, equal value, equal access to God. Amen? And just in case you say, well, that sounds like a good statement, well, let me give you a scripture to back that up. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And so the next time you read some crazy article, next time you hear some foolish, bogus stuff at work, and you're like, oh, women this, and God doesn't, and how come God? You're like, wait a minute, let me tell you what the Bible says. Let me tell you what God's word says. Galatians chapter 3 says in verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Notice the next phrase for what it says. For ye, that's everybody. Ye are all one in Christ. And I'm going to say it one more time. Wives, you are commanded to submit to your own husband, and this does not mean you are a lesser person. You just have a different role in marriage. You have a different role. And so I challenge you with simple this. What's, what, did, what to do next? What, what for all of us to do next? Four things simply right here. Would you just, today, would you admit that you need to strengthen your, your marriage? Would you just start by saying, okay, God, I, whether it's something last week, whether it's something right now, maybe it's not even something we talked about. Just admit that you need to strengthen your marriage. Would you commit to apply something you've learned today, this next week? Number three, this is the hardest. It's going to be hard because we are just so busy. But would you omit anything that will interfere with giving attention to strengthening your marriage this week? Man, there are all kinds of things. Things that, that we, we, we're, we're going to talk about these coming up, that we, we just fill our lives and fill our lives, and then we neglect the things we're supposed to be doing. I'm not talking about taking your family out on a date or your wife on a date, which is cool, and you should. But because you're so busy, you're not doing the things you should be doing as a man, as a wife, as a, as a mother. You see what I'm saying? So ask yourself, what do you need to omit this week? And then submit yourself, your own life, to Christ. Well, my husband is not. I say this, man. I. We'll we'll look at it next week. And and. I, so much rides on our shoulders. So much rides on our shoulders, I get it. But can I tell you, when you stand before God, 
you will give an account for your family and how you led them. You will stand there and have to answer to God for how you led your family. And you can sit there like me at times and go, I'm not worthy of this. I don't know how to do it. I struggle. Okay. Now God's going to give us the answers next week in his word. And I want us to succeed because here's why. God says it first of all. It's his system that he set up. If it's his system he set up, guess what? It works. Right? Don't you like when something works? But then when you start to look at the brokenness of family, much of it can be stemmed back to the lack of leadership of a male. Much of it can. It's a heavy thing that we carry. It's not greater than what our, our wives carry. Keep in mind, it's a different role that God has said you have to carry. Would today, would you and I just all submit to Christ? You know, in this area of my life, I've, I've wandered. I've gotten too busy. I've gotten too crazy. I've, I, I've not brought myself under the obedience of this thing in my life. What do you need to admit? What do you need to commit? What do you need to uh, omit? And what do you need to submit? Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Father, I, I come before you today. And I, and I just simply pray and ask, God, that today you would just begin to take these principles, Lord. There's not a single person in here, Lord. We've got all these things figured out. It, and it, for some, it just feels like so overwhelming. Lord, maybe for some, because of past experiences, it's so painful and hurt and we're we're, look, we, we need to work on some of that forgiveness of some of this past experiences. And, and Lord, some, Lord, it, it, we haven't led as men as the way we should. And, and so when we try to step up to lead, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a fight. And Lord, for, for some, Lord, the ladies, their, their husband will struggle to do that. And yet, what do they need to do? How do they need to continue to submit, but then grow in their own faith? Father, I pray, I pray that today, God, this beautiful picture you give us of Christ and his church, Lord, the more we, we mess this up, Lord, the more we mess up this beautiful picture that you have. Today, Lord, I ask that you would just begin to work and encourage and challenge us. Lord, thank you for all that you do. Thank you and praise you, God. And just right now, and just with your heads bowed, and there's no music playing, don't worry about it. Just would you, if you need to do business with God, just take a moment and just do business with God. We can come forward and pray. You can be right there. You can pray with your partner.
I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that, that God, in the weeks to come, we're going to see, God, you're just moving in each of our lives, letting go of some baggage, letting go of some things that we've messed up, and looking to you for praise and honor and glory, seeing that, God, you're beginning a change in our lives, our families. Lord, I pray that each of us today, Lord, would be able to take something home and take something away. And God, I'm sure we have more questions, and that those sometimes having more questions are good, but um, and let us ask those questions and let us seek you for those answers. And but Lord, let us also not forsake the principles that we do know in searching for those questions or those answers to those questions. So, Father, I ask now. Um, that each and every one of us would submit to you as we submit to one another in the fear of God. Lord, I love you. I give you praise and honor and glory for who you are. And we ask these things in your son's precious name. All God's people said, amen. amen. Awesome. All right. We won't sing today. That was, uh, just want to end right there. Appreciate it. Um, so again, I, I say it, man, everyone be back next week, really will, and I, I mean it, I, I, 